Um, these are all the fall patterns I love, but I'm too lazy to make. Hope you enjoy. Hi, welcome or welcome back to Study Knits. My name is Allie. I'm a medical student. I'm currently living in the US and obviously I love knitting. If you're new here, I'm in my fourth year of medical school. I don't really live anywhere right now. I kind of hop around every month or so. Right now I'm in Philadelphia and although it is mid-September, it is a beautiful summer weekend. Right now it's about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which is nice. It's nice to have a little pop of summer, even though I'm, I'm getting ready for fall knitting. I'm wearing my, I don't know if you recognize this, my Malides top. I wasn't sure if I was going to have a good chance to wear it before next summer, but so I'm really glad that this weekend we're having some summery weather so that I can get a chance to wear this. I'm going out with my friend tonight, and so I thought it would be a nice time to debut my Malides top out and about. That's not the point of today's video. I already have all of my fall plans, fall and winter, and honestly early spring plans kind of set in stone. In the process of getting all of my fall and winter knitting organized, I went through my Ravelry queue and I kind of cleared it out. And there were a decent amount of sweater patterns that had been sitting in there for a minute. These are not, these are not brand new patterns. These are old patterns that have been in my queue for years. So I thought I would go through them. These are sweaters that I would love to make someday, just for some reason have never gotten around to purchasing yarn for it. Other things have come up. So I thought I would run through that today in case anyone is looking for any additional fall knitting inspiration. I believe I have, I have 12 patterns lined up to talk about. We'll just hop right in. First up, the Moby sweater. If you don't know about the Moby sweater, you've probably been hiding under a rock. It is this gorgeous cabled sweater. It's a pattern by Petite Knit that really took the world by storm a couple of years ago. Gorgeous cabled pattern. My vision for making this for myself, I always wanted a dark green one that was cropped so that it would be like a cute, cute work outfit, cute casual going out outfit. From the second this pattern was released, I loved it. Sorry, I'm looking at my brow so I don't miss anything. It's a DK and a lace weight yarn held together to make it worsted. I know, I think it's about 50-50 of the patterns on Ravelry are held with mohair. Like half are held with mohair and the other half are not knit with mohair. And I think maybe part of, part of, you know, I know part of the reason I haven't made this is I don't know if I want a fuzzy mohair haloed one or a not haloed one. I think a lot of people use the Sadness Garn um, Pure Ghent to make this, which I feel like is what I would use. And then I think it's one of those you can either hold it plus or minus mohair. Either way, I have been eyeing this sweater for such a long time. It's so popular and I feel like for good reason. I still am yet to make a fully cabled pattern. I do have one coming up in my queue that I have yarn for that I'm going to make a fully cabled vest, the Lana Vest by Irene Lynn. That's going to sort of be my gateway into a fully cabled sweater. For some reason, a fully cabled sweater just seems like a really big commitment to me, but a fully cabled vest is like dipping my toe in the water. So a Moby sweater, I feel like this is a quintessential Depending on the color, it could be the quintessential fall winter sweater. But like I said, I always envisioned having a dark green one to pair with maybe like a little plaid skirt and some boots or underneath a white collared shirt with some jeans. I just, I don't know. I love this pattern. I can't believe I haven't made this yet, but I have not purchased yarn or really made any solid steps to making this. Another one that I, again, I don't know why I haven't made this. This is the, I always said it, the Yoon sweater by Anne Fiskum Sund, also known as November Knits. This sweater, this is one of those sweaters that the first time I saw it, I, I loved it and I knew I really wanted it. I always wanted uh, a navy blue one held with no hair. It's just this gorgeous sweater. It's a raglan sweater, but it had this, has this really like severe, is what I would call it, this really like, bold split hem 
just this really, really aggressively split hem. I love it. The second I saw it, I love it. And I knew I wanted one. I have not made it. Again, don't know why. This is, again, another worsted weight pattern suggested DK and lace held together. The recommended yarn is Isayer, their mohair and their Jensen, Jensen yarn. Yeah, gorgeous sweater. I love the, I think it's a two by two. It's two by two rib details on the neck, the sleeve, and the massive hem. But I love this. This seems like such a nice a casual sweater to either wear with trousers or jeans. A wonderful transitional sweater. I always saw this more of a transitional sweater. A fall sweater or a spring sweater. Again, gorgeous. I have made patterns by this designer before. She is the designer behind the Montpelier top. I think that's the only thing of hers actually that I've made. But I love so many of her patterns. The Montpelier top has just been the only one that I've made so far. But I, I also have a, a lot of her other patterns in my favorites that I just, I love, I love a lot of her patterns. I think they're, a lot of them are very, they're very simple, but they have some nice details to them that don't make them plain or basic. A lot of them have a little flourish, um, like this one with the interesting kind of like two by two looking raglan increases and the two by two red and the hem. One day I'll make it. I love it. Next up is the Ovis sweater by the Petite Knitter. Not Petite Knit, the Petite Knitter. If you don't know about her, she is a pattern designer and she has an, an Instagram. She lives in um, like Northern Canada in the Arctic. I believe she lives in, in Alaquit, I wanna say. So many of her pictures are gorgeous, showcasing like the Canadian tundra. Absolutely gorgeous photography over on her Instagram. And in addition, she has, she makes these beautiful, beautiful Fair Isle and stranded color work sweaters. And usually at the same time, we'll have like a mitten or a sock pattern to go along with it. This is the one that I've been the most drawn to of hers, the Ovis sweater. It has these little sheep on them. I actually made the Ovis mittens. Uh, yeah, last winter I made them and I loved them. They are gorgeous. It did take me like three tries to get it right. I had never, that was my first attempt at stranded color work slash Fair Isle-ish. I'm not quite sure if this is considered Fair Isle knitting or if it's just stranded color work. Maybe something I'll need to look into just, just for my own, just for my own learning. I really struggled with the Ovis mittens making them because, well, I struggled with the tension because I was using magic loop. And basically the, the turning point, like the sides of the magic loop, the tension was, was really off. So that's something I really struggled with. And after a couple of tries and as I went along, the tension and the evenness, it sort of evened out along the non-magic loop ends, if that makes sense. My biggest hold up to making a stranded color work a sweater is the tension and I don't want it to look puckery i don't i want it to look very even and very nice and i have concerns about tackling a sweater it is all stranded color work i've also never knit a circular yoke before so i don't know how i would like the shape on myself and that seems like a really big commitment to make stranded color work and a circular yoke and not be sure that it's just the technique is going to end up looking good and also making sure that I actually like to fit on myself. I've been eyeing this one for a while. The recommended yarn is East Hex um, Plotilope, which is the unspun yarn. I have some in my stash, plan to make something with the East Hex Plotilope. I've heard it's quite itchy. It's, it's unspun Icelandic wool. So this is definitely, this is a winter, winter, winter garment. Make no mistake about it. I don't think I would use that yarn to make a full sweater with, unless I end up living somewhere. I used to live in Maine, which is very, very cold, very cold. Not quite as cold as the Canadian tundra, but still cold. If I move back to Maine, I think I, I would actually wear an Icelandic wool jumper, but not living in Maine, I don't really see myself wearing it. I think I would use a different yarn, but either way, the detail is just absolutely gorgeous. And the little sheep are so cute and 
I think part of the reason I love a lot of her patterns is her photography is just amazing. And the setting in which she photographs a lot of her finished objects and a lot of her patterns are just absolutely gorgeous. So there is definitely some like idealization of the world in which she lives in, but you can't deny it, this sweater pattern is gorgeous. And so many of her other patterns are, are beautiful as well. Moving on, along the lines, along the lines of stranded color work, the circular yoke is the Let's Boogie Sweater by Kate Franceschi. This is another one that I saw it. I saw it on my Instagram. I don't know if it was from her or if it was from someone making it, but I saw it and I was like, I want that. I need it. I, I love Halloween. Halloween's my favorite season. September and October are my favorite months. I love fall. I love spooky season. I love ghosts, pumpkins, jack-o'-lanterns, candy corn, and like I love everything about it. Scary movies, bats, I love it. I love it. So I've always kind of wanted a Halloween sweater. However, I don't want to be making a Halloween sweater in July, which is when I would need to start it, probably, to have it finished by September, October. So that's what's been holding me back on this, is that seems a lot of work, a lot of work, strength and color work. It seems like a lot of work for a very seasonal sweater. I'm not saying I wouldn't pull this out in February. I could see myself pulling it out in February. This is a DK, a DK sweater. Recommended yarn is two yarns I've never heard of. Yarn Love, uh, Amy March DK, and Kremke Soul Wool Reborn Wool Recycled. People have used Nitpick Swish Decay on Ravelry, Drops Charisma, Drops Lima. Gorgeous sweater, very fun sweater, very bright sweater. I feel like if I were to make it, I'm looking at the sample photo now, if I were to make it, I think instead of using where the ghosts are, instead of using a bright orange, I would use more of a burnt orange. And then instead of a bright yellow, I'd maybe use more of like an ochre to make it a little more toned down. But either way, the candy corn motifs, the little ghost motifs, it's just so cute. I saw it. I was like, that is the perfect fall Halloween sweater. And I really want it. There are a couple of other Halloween sweaters out there that are really cute. A lot of them are obviously circular yoke sweaters that are gorgeous. This is just the one that I've always been the most drawn to, the most, the most that I've wanted to make. And it's called Let's Boogie. That's just so cute. Up next... This one, this pattern is three years old. The fluffy ass brioche sweater by Clara Eggers. I love this sweater. I also love her Instagram account. I follow her Instagram and she posts a lot about her knitting and then also her personal life. And I was following her and was, um, I loved her. I loved her account. And then she made this sweater pattern. So it was part of the, part of it. I loved it because from what I can tell online, she seems like an incredible human. And then a really cute sweater. I mean, honestly, the the name the name says it all. It is a fluffy ass brioche sweater. The the recommended yarn, if you can't tell by looking at it, this is like this is a jumbo jumbo weight yarn. That's a technical term, actually. It says it on Ravelry. It's technical jumbo weight yarn. So this is like we are knitters. The wool, not the petite wool, the wool. And wool in the gang, crazy sexy wool. This is a thick yarn. This is the sad thing I have. I have We Are Knitters the Wool in Yarnicorn, which I was obsessed with the first year that I was knitting. Oh my god. The absolute chokehold that Yarnicorn had on me. Next level. I have We Are Knitters the Wool in Yarnicorn and in um, one of the white colors. I think it's probably natural, but I don't know though. So I have the means to make this sweater. I don't know that I would actually wear it. I just don't know if I see myself wearing a wool jumbo sweater so part of me is like would i ever wear it but then i don't really have anything else to do with the the we are knitters the wool because if i'm not going to wear this jumbo sweater what am i going to do with it i also wonder i don't think it would take too long to make because it is a jumbo yarn the lovely thing about this sweater pattern is that it is um at least from what i can tell on instagram and from sample photos is that it is actually reversible because it's brioche. I think one side may not look as nice as the other, but I think it is a reversible pattern. So this is this is a thick, a thick jumbo weight. The suggested needle size, are you ready? It's a US 19. This is a 15, 15 millimeter needle. This is a thick needle. She also, I believe, has a cardigan version. 
which I think is a thinner weight. Yeah, she has a fluffy ass brioche cardigan that's a bulky weight, so you can use We Are Vetters the Petite Bowl. So if you're sitting there and you, like me, are like, this is great, but I don't know if I ever see myself wearing this, she has a cardigan version that is a bit thinner. Either way, I'm obsessed with that pattern, have always wanted to make that pattern. <laughs> Moving on, another one, sweater number 18 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. If you have been following along my podcast, you know that I have a little bit of one-sided beef with My Favorite Things Knitwear because of the discrepancy in um, needle size in her patterns. Um, just so that's kind of soured me on her a little bit but this sweater this is a gorgeous gorgeous textured knit i love a textured knit and this is another one of the sweaters this was i think my first introduction to my favorite things knitwear i saw this sweater on instagram somebody made it and i saw that sweater and i was like that is genuinely one of the most beautiful sweaters i've ever seen in my life what is it how can i make it this i'm gonna lump it in with the moby sweater i, I have no reason really to not make it i Again, see this in like a dark green for myself, I love dark green, or perhaps like a very rich, warm brown. Something to really show off the beautiful texture. There have been a couple kind of look-alike sweaters, if that makes sense, with a similar texture. Given my beef with my favorite things, I definitely would be willing to maybe make one of the other look-alikes instead. But I haven't seen one so far that's like, that's giving me the same effect as my favorite things. Sweater number 18. This is a um, Aran and lace held together. A lot of knitting for all of heavy merino. If you know me, you know that I love knitting for all of. So I know I would use heavy merino <laughs> and soft silk mohair for knitting for all of. I love the... Um, sort of the shoulder details and how the shoulder is a little bit it's like the simplest part of the pattern which offers sort of a break in the eye Ugh, i don't know i just love it i'm obsessed with it sweater number 18. again no real reason not to make it except for my beef with her sorry hopefully the angle is kind of similar my phone stopped recording because i ran out of storage so I think I was done talking about sweater number 18 and was ready to move on to my next one, which is the port sweater. Another like pseudo textured sweater. This is by Ozetta. I love Ozetta. If you know me, you know I love her patterns. I find them incredibly wearable, very friendly for like everyday day-to-day -day sweaters. This sweater is gorgeous. It has this little ribbing detail right where you right where you pick it for the shoulders. It is a drop shoulder design. It just seems very versatile, very fall, winter, spring friendly. This is recommended a lace, a mohair held with a worsted yarn. I don't know per se that I would use a mohair for this if I were to make it for myself. I think, I feel like when you, whenever I use a mohair in something, it sort of takes away from the day-to-day -day versatility of it, if that makes sense. It immediately kind of makes the garment a little more elevated, a little less casual, from my own perception of my own wardrobe. You do you. The worsted yarn she recommends using for this is the Wool Dreamers Mata, which is a yarn that I've, I've really been itching to use. I believe that Ozetta has a set of, she has like a set of colorways with Wool Dreamers Mata, I believe it's Mata that she has a selection of colors for. It may be a different yarn from the same brand. Either way, I've been really itching to try some of their yarn, so I would definitely use some of their yarn for this. What's really been holding me back from this sweater is the mock neck. The mock neck looks great here on her, but I could just never see myself wearing that mock neck. I could see myself turning it into maybe a turtleneck or a folded collar, but I do, I always hesitate if I'm going to modify the neck of a garment. I find that the, you get to the end and you work the collar and the collar just isn't quite right. It sort of ruins the whole garment, which has happened to me before in the sense that I haven't been thrilled with the collar. And even if the rest of the garment's perfect, I am just less likely to reach for that garment because the collar isn't what I wanted. So I always hesitate when modifying the collar of sweaters. 
that's what's giving me pause with this. Otherwise, I think it's a gorgeous sweater, a nice twist on a classic drop shoulder design. And who doesn't love a drop shoulder? Up next, th this one's this one's still in my queue, actually. I didn't clean it, clear this out from the queue. This is the Party Jumper by Inez Oliveira, also known as Vert Knit. The same designer who made the Malides top, which is a reversible top. It has a v-neck in the front, square neck in the back. Same with this one. This has kind of a boat neck in the front and then a v-neck in the back, but there's buttons. So it's basically a reversible cardigan. Hence, Cardi Jumper. I love this pattern. I love most of her designs. Um, they're so, they're very, very, very elegant patterns in my opinion. Very upscale, very Cezanne looking. Oh, that's right. She has a striped version and a solid version. This is a light fingering and lace weight held together, making a, making a sport weight. No. The reason this is still in my queue is that I have Knitting for Olive Merino and Soft Silk Faux Hair in the color Artichoke Purple that I want to use for this. I think it would be a lovely purple cardigan, mohair, and merino, nice transitional wear, a fancy, a fancy upscale looking cardigan. I don't think, I don't see myself having this be a cardigan that like I just kind of grab and bring along with me in case I get cold. I see this being a cardigan that I build an outfit around, if that makes sense. The reason this is in this, in this video and not in my fall plans, winter plans knitting video is that I only have two, two balls of each of the yarns that I've mentioned. So I will need to purchase more yarn for this card again, for the Cardi Jumper, if I actually want to make it. And right now I'm just not ready to commit to purchasing the additional yarn that I would need to complete this, this garment. Other than that, looks gorgeous. The striped, the striped one's very appealing too. Love this card again. Love this jumper. Hoping to make it at some point. This is, I guess, the most the most tangible, the most likely of all of these that I am to make. Next, I added this one in here, the Harlow sweater V-neck by Kidri. I love this. I the reason this is weird. I've made two of these. I've made two of these, and so you're probably saying, Allie, why is this? Why is this in your video of fall patterns? You want to knit, but you're too lazy to knit. I knit one for myself using, oh, what did I use? Hip Knit Shop Pop Merino in the color Chocolate Toffee. I ruined it. Basically, it was my most worn sweater, my favorite thing I've ever made. I wore it all the time. I wore it as like a sweatshirt at home. I wore it out and about. I loved it. I loved everything about it. It was perfect. I actually put it in the washing machine and it felted and shrunk and there was nothing to be done about it. And so I threw it away. It was devastating. I shed tears over it. I loved it. I loved it so much. I also made my friend one. I used Drops Air and Drops Kid Silk. It was this gorgeous sort of um, orangey, mauve, rose-colored sweater. Gorgeous, gorgeous sweater. Loved making that. So I've made two of them. However, I don't have any in my possession that I wear all the time. My my own Harlow sweater v-neck was ruined a little over a year ago, so I have, we're, we're now over a year without my Harlow sweater v-neck. I really want to make another one because I love my other one so much. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. I don't know if I want to use the leftover hip knit shop pop merino or if I want to make another one, if I want to make a mohair one. But I do really want to make another one, which is why it's on this list. Gorgeous. It's got the two by two rib details, v-neck, folded collar, so squishy, so, so gorgeous. Nothing else to say about it. This is truly the perfect sweater pattern. If you're wondering if you're wanting to make a v-neck sweater, I cannot recommend this pattern enough. I love it. I should make another one. I really should. At some, at some point, I'll make another one. This is recommended. It is lace and sport held together um, to make a worsted weight yarn. I I did not use any mohair. It's recommended again two yarns that I don't know: Crimpy Soul Wool Silky Kid, and then BC Yarn Semilla Pura Got Certified. I don't know either of those yarns, but a sport and a mohair held together. Um, I liked mine without mohair. I found it more. A little more casual, as I said before, I think mohair elevates things, but very sad, very tragic, tragic. Another one that I love, this is the, um, 
I think it's called the thin sweater, but there's there's three tees by Wool and Beyond. This is it just looks like like an elegant long sleeve t-shirt is what I think of it instead of a sweater because it is I believe just a fingering weight confirmed just a fingering weight sweater um, with knitting for olive merino is the recommended yarn that's you know me that's what I would use for it it has this gorgeous little like kind of stitch work detail on the front and uh, there is a corresponding skirt to go along with it the thin skirt which looks together they look like quite the set. I, I've said all I need to say. It's a sweater. It's a, it's a fingering weight sweater. And that should give most of us pause. Gives me pause, certainly. Because I'm ending my summer knits now with a lot of fingering weight patterns. And it just takes so long. My lord, does it take so long. What is three millimeter needle? A three millimeter, a whole sweater on three millimeter needles. I don't know that I have the patience for that. I don't know that I love any pattern enough to make that yet. In the future, perhaps, but this is a gorgeous pattern and the skirt is equally gorgeous, but this video is about sweaters, not about skirts. So is it drop shoulder? I believe it's drop shoulder. It's drop shoulder, but it's with a decent amount of shape into the shoulder. So very, a very casual top. I like it because it looks, it can be a very casual top. I could see wearing it with like jeans, leggings, even in the summer, like casually with shorts, but then you could pair it with perhaps a matching skirt, perhaps in the same color. And it would just be this elevated look. I, this is another one that the second I saw it, I think I just saw this when I was perusing Ravelry one day and I was like, I love this. I want it. I need it but I, I have no plans to make it. I don't know when I'll ever have the kind of motivation to make this, this fingering weight sweater. I don't know if I'll ever have motivation to make a fingering weight sweater. We'll take one thing clear. Next is the, I always said the Serene sweater, the Serene sweater. I'm gonna go with Serene sweater by Kadri, another Kadri pattern, love Kadri. Another one I saw, I love this. It is a DK weight kind of slouchy turtleneck. It's raglan. But I love this because it seems it's a thin turtleneck and the turtleneck isn't stiff. It's not a ribbed turtleneck, it's a stockinette turtleneck, which makes it a little casual, a little more light wear, if that makes sense. The recommended yarn for this is a Clinton Hill Cashmere DK. I don't even know how much that is, it's probably so much. I would not use that. I'm not rich enough to use that. Drops Alpaca, I would use that. Um, knitting for all of Merino with mohair. Yeah, that's more doable for me. But either way, this seems like a very, I see myself getting a ton of use out of this. The, the sample photos on her look amazing. I've seen some photos of the projects and it seems like the neck is hit or miss on people, but it can end up being too tight or too loose. And if it's too tight, it's a weird looking tight turtleneck with a loose body. And if it's too loose, it's a weirdly gaping, saggy folded neckline uh, or folded collar, basically. I wouldn't really know how to troubleshoot that. And like I've mentioned before, I have pause when it comes to collars of garments. Yeah, can, can make or break a garment. And that scares me. I would say the majority of these the majority of the Ravelry photos are gorgeous. Seems like a lovely casual, a casual turtleneck. DK, so a little, a little thicker, a little thicker than a fingering weight sweater, um, but still not by any means bulky. I think with this one, I don't think I would hold it with mohair. I think I would just, because if I'm going for casual, I'm not gonna hold my hand. I think I would pick perhaps a drops alpaca, Looks like, I mean, absolutely, absolutely gorgeous top. Again, I love Kadri, I love her patterns. Last, ending on a fun note, I have always wanted to make myself a Harry Potter inspired Weasley sweater. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Weasley sweater, it's, it's like an oversized sweater with your initial. <laughs> One of the characters in Harry Potter, Mrs. Weasley always made her children Weasley sweaters every year for Christmas. 
Anyway, so there's a lady on TikTok, and I think it seems like all she does is just turn out Weasley sweaters, and they are absolutely gorgeous. I, for the life of me, cannot remember her handle. However, she does have a pattern on Ravelry. The pattern is the Weasley sweater. Her name on Ravelry, Ravelry is Rita Korobrick. It's this gorgeous pattern. It is a raglan, Aran weight. Uh, love an Aran weight garment. Mits up quickly. Um, I love that the neckline has a little bit of detail. Um, you can see in the sample photo, um, you work the neck and then, or you work the collar and then there's a couple of little details on the neck to give it a little bit of flourish and make it not just a plain raglan sweater. And then the letter is gone on and knit back with double stitch. So you do not work it as you go. There's no like color work really. It's just gone on with double stitch. In case you were wondering, I'm a Hufflepuff. I always wanted this warm, tweedy, golden yellow sweater with a black or dark gray A on it. That's always what I envisioned. I know knit picks, I believe a lot of people have used, people have used, at least for this specific sweater pattern, people have used knit picks, wool of the Andes tweed. Again, if you know me, you know I love knit picks, wool of the Andes. So they have a gorgeous yellow color. I can't remember what it's called. It's called Maple Heather. Maple Heather is the exact color that I always wanted it in. That's always been my dream, but I do feel like when push comes to shove, I do tend to make a bit more staple garments in my wardrobe. And so this, quite literally since I started knitting four years ago, has been kind of just pushed to the wayside. So that is it for these sweaters that I'm too lazy to make, but have loved for quite some time. If you've made any of these, let me know. Would love to hear about how they went, perhaps to motivate me to make them myself. I hope maybe you got a little bit of inspiration from this. Maybe it was just fun to watch and learn about new sweater patterns. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you're enjoying the first little bits of fall knitting and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.